Quantum computing is getting hot and investors are dying to have exposure to this rapidly changing and rapidly growing industry that could disrupt and change a lot of things for the future. And this is why those quantum stocks have been getting bid up like never before, up five, six, seven hundred, even nine hundred percent over the last few weeks or few months alone. They've been going crazy. And in my opinion, the best way to get exposure isn't by FOMOing into a lot of those stocks that have quantum in their name and they're getting bit up like crazy and a lot of them they don't even have any profits and they won't have any profits for many years to come the best way to bet on this trend is to own a larger company that also has a quantum computing division and that's why i'm going to analyze one company that actually has it and if they ever split this company public they could create a lot of value for shareholders and it's a very cheap company in general and this is the best way i believe is for people to get exposure to quantum computing. Now, one company which I'm not gonna analyze because I talked about it many times is Google. And a lot of you know what Google did with quantum computing and the advancements they made in their technology. And I talked about it a lot, the stock is still very cheap. But if Google ever decides to take the quantum business public onto a different kind of name, it could command a much higher valuation and it could create massive value to shareholders. This is how Ferrari was created when it got split out. This is how Mobileye got split out of Intel. Those companies are worth much, much more being on their own than being within a larger conglomerate. But the stocks that I'm gonna focus on for today's video is a stock called Honeywell. And Honeywell has been flat since 2021. It hasn't been doing too well. Not a lot of people are talking about this one, but Honeywell owns 54% of a quantum company called Quantinum. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And they specialize in many different things like quantum hardware, something within chemistry, computational chemistry or something, which I'm not an expert in, I'm just being honest. And I read that they have a very promising cybersecurity product within quantum computing in general. And this is very promising stuff. Honeywell owns 54% of it. And this is still a private company, but they did put up the intentions of potentially taking it through an IPO, so taking it public, which create massive value to shareholders, and it could command around a $10 billion valuation. They own 54%, so this is $5.4 billion of a stake. You're getting in this quantum company right now if you're investing in Honeywell. But Honeywell has much more upside than just being with quantum. But if you want some quantum exposure, Google is one way, and Honeywell is one way, and I believe Honeywell is a little bit better over here. I'm going to tell you why. But in general, it's much better to buy those companies than just following into just a quantum stock that's trading at crazy valuations. And something very interesting has been happening at Honeywell is a very popular activist investor, Elliot Management, took a $5 billion stake in Honeywell and he's trying to break up the company. He's trying to split it in different pieces. And the company recently got upgraded over potential of the company being split or being broken up. And the company does operate in three or four, you could say, main segments. And aerospace technologies, they're huge in that, 45% of profits. Then they have industrial automation. This is huge for the future. And uh, Honeywell is big in that. They have 22%. They have building automation, 17%. And then they have other energy and sustainability you know, solutions. And they have many different materials that you know, they, it's used for semiconductor and used for many different things. And this is 16% of segment profit. And Elliot mainly want to split it up in two different pieces. The first one will be mainly in aerospace and the second one will be within industrial building automation. And this is what they're trying to do. And this is from Elliot management itself. And if you look at the aerospace valuation right now, it's much, much lower than the median. The median is 22.4 times enterprise value to EBITDA. Honeywell is trading at 16.7 times because it's within a big conglomerate, it's discounted. But if it was on its own, it would be worth a lot more money for shareholders. The second part of the business, which is automation in general, the median is 19.7 times, but Honeywell is trading at 16.7 times. So you could see the kind of upside that could happen. And this is not something that's new. A lot of companies did that stuff. You could maybe look back at what happened with Carrier and, and Otis. You'd look what happened with GE and a lot of different companies. And this is the kind of upside those companies saw after being split up. 
The first one, 73%. The second one is 40% upside. I believe within one year it happened, which is something crazy. The third one was 50% upside, and this is mainly in the valuation. Now, if you look at the upside potential of Honeywell that Elliot has, if he was able to split up the company, he sees between 51 to 75% upside. So between $330 per share to $383 per share, and Honeywell right now is trading at $227 per share. So if it ever does get split up, and if the analysts are right, and if Elliot succeed, and they were able to split up the company, you could get potentially get 50 to 70% upside within one to two years if that ever ends up happening. But if it doesn't happen, Honeywell in general is not a bad company to be invested in because the management have been trying to switch things around. They're trying to split up some different businesses. They spend a lot of money on mergers and acquisitions, $14 billion in total. They have a dividend, they have buybacks, but they've been doing a lot of acquisitions to try to diversify the business a little bit more and bring back growth to the company. And they've been succeeding so far, and I believe they will succeed even more. And Honeywell, just by itself, without it being broken up, without the quantum stuff that we talked about, is still an amazing investment at this price. And if you look at the balance sheet, they have $10 billion in cash. Total long-term debt is $25 billion, so net debt is like $15 billion. But it's really not a big deal because the company is making $6.4 billion in free cash flow. So $15 billion of debt isn't really something to worry about, just my opinion. They have it, so which means they can do more acquisitions and grow free cash flow even more. So that's amazing. You look at uh, you know dividends. They do have a dividend, and it's around 2%. Not the highest dividend yield ever but it's a decent dividend for uh, dividend investors. And they expect over the very long term, adjusted EPS growth of 8 to 12%. The analysts, they lean pretty close to 12%. So we can expect 11 to 12% EPS growth for the very long term, unless they do more acquisitions, 11 to 12%. And the company right now is trading around 22 times earnings. And 22 times earnings is not really too expensive for Honeywell. It's trading right at the mean multiple. It went as high as 29 times and as low as 12 times. So if without any multiple expansion or contraction, I would see 12 to 13% annual return on Honeywell from here. This is excluding if they split out any businesses like quantum computing or if they split out the materials business. And this is excluding potentially 50 to 70% upside if they agreed and if Elliot was able to split out the company, 50 to 70% upside in the short term, over the long term, 12 to 13% annual return with a decent dividend. And you're getting around a $5.4 billion stake, an amazing quantum computing company. So the way I would bet on it, I would like Honeywell very much. I might buy the stock very soon. It's looking very interesting, and there's many different ways it could play out. Short-term, 50-70%, long-term, 12-13%, and you get a piece of the quantum business. So I like it very much. And this was my pick for today's video, not financial advice. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I'll talk to you in another video.